Hi, there are so many people out there who eat right, exercise a lot. There are people who spend time in the gyms and with their workouts six out of seven days, and yet they don't seem to get the bodies that they want or they don't seem to burn the fat that they should be. And yet they move from one exercise program to another. So today we're going to look at two reasons why people who work out in gyms, people who lift weights, people who have intensive workouts fail to lose the fat that they're aiming to or fail to get the bodies that they're striving to get. So number one, let's understand how fat really burns. Okay, I've spoken about this before. There is no such thing as a fat burning food. Foods don't burn fat. Foods digest and create energy from the nutrients that get absorbed into your cells. There is no fat burning food on this planet which you take and it will help your body to burn fat. Like there is no magic pill as well which will help you to lose weight. Because if you simply see that, I mean if that wasn't true, if there was that one magic food or that one magic pill, there wouldn't be people struggling to lose weight or burn body fat. So number one, we need to understand that when we exercise, why are we exercising? Movement is good for us. Movement creates circulation. Blood drives oxygen and nutrients from the food that we eat to all the trillion cells to provide the right energy to also burn fat. So when we exercise, what we need to understand that it is really about muscle. Now I'm not talking about big muscle. I'm not talking about bodybuilders. I'm not talking about getting a buff body. Okay, what we need to understand that when you're working out, you are breaking down muscle. Now, when you are recovering, that means when you're not working out or when you're sleeping or if you're taking a rest day the next day, while, you're, while you are in recovery, your muscle is burning fat to create energy to repair itself. So the protein that you take is important for you to repair the muscle that you break down while you work out. So if you do a workout where there is no muscle breakdown, there is very, very little fat loss. And if you do a workout where you're not breaking down muscle, but yet you're consuming a lot of protein through your whey proteins or high protein foods, a lot of the protein is not getting utilized by the muscle which is broken down to repair itself. So now you have excess protein that's not utilized in the body that gets stored as fat. We all know a couple of people who constantly take protein shakes, they go to the gym, and yet they don't even look close to getting the body that they should be having with all the protein that they're consuming and all the workouts that they're doing. The first ingredient that we want to talk about today when it comes to the success of burning body fat and building a great body is recovery and rest. It is so important that you understand how important recovery and rest is for your fat loss, and for building muscle. So let's go back to the gym or to your exercise once more. During a workout, you are tearing down muscle. You are breaking down muscle. And in your recovery period, you are building muscle. The muscle building never happens while you're lifting weights. It never happens while you're working out. All the muscle building happens while you're sleeping or while you're in recovery mode, which means you're resting. But if you look at the average workout schedule of a person today who's trying to lose weight and struggling to lose weight, they will be working out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday with one break day on Sunday. There is no recovery for their muscle growth during the week. Some of the top bodybuilders, the top athletes and people with the greatest bodies have minimal workouts. They train maybe three to max four times a week and in between they just do stretching, flexibility, or nothing. They're allowing their body to recover so that the muscle that they break down during their workouts has time to now be stimulated and grow. Now, the more muscle you grow, the less fat you have because muscle uses a lot of energy that comes from your body burning fat. So when you look at someone who has muscle tone, there is a lot of energy used by that person's body to hold the muscle in place. The body is constantly burning, burning fat to maintain energy to hold that muscle in place, which is why people who are more ripped and have more muscles have less body fat automatically. So the whole idea is when you also build muscle, you stimulate something called HGH, which is human growth hormone, something that a lot of people are getting on today, which is very dangerous. They're taking growth hormone injections or growth hormone supplements thinking that they can replicate what the intelligent human body does naturally. Every little bit of muscle or muscle tone that you build, 
you start stimulating HGH, human growth hormone, automatically, which uses fat as a fuel. HGH automatically burns body fat in your abdominal region, in your midriff region, your thighs, your hip, and your butt to maintain muscle. So like I always say, it is always about hormones. Good health and poor health is about good hormones or poor communication between hormones. So now, what you want to focus on is, are your workouts to the level, depending on your goal, if you're looking at burning a lot of body fat, are you doing the right workouts that challenge your muscles? If you're not doing a workout that challenges your muscle, there is no muscle breakdown, which means there is no fat burn happening. Yep, you can constantly do one hour of cardio on a treadmill or a cycle, some of the most useless exercises on the planet, and think you're going to lose weight. You may lose one or two kilos of body weight, and after that, you'll hit a plateau because your body gets used to it, your muscles get used to it, your heart and lung capacity gets used to that one hour of walking monotonously on an elliptical or a cycle or a treadmill. You've got to put your body through movement, through different movements. In 15 or 20 minutes, you can do a set of squats, push-ups, jumping, japs, uh, jumping jacks, uh, jump rope, planks, lift weights, whatever it is, intense, fast, cycle after cycle, no time for the body to break, short breaks, and then you recover longer. The next day, you don't even have to work out unless you're training a completely different muscle. So the whole idea is we neglect recovery, we neglect rest. There are people who run marathons, they sleep for four to five hours and they, they have rest and recovery. Now imagine you're using the same muscles to train every day. You're running every single day. Where is the recovery? But abroad is very different. People run one day, the second day they train. They train their quads, they train their hamstrings, they train their shoulders, their biceps, their back, their chest, all these muscles. Then the next day they run again. Then the next day they train something else or they, they only do flexibility training or you know they do yoga, they do pilates. to overall and holistically train the body. But that recovery is so important for the muscles to recover, get stronger and make you more productive for the next workout. So for, for example, there's a principle of training called rest-based training. It's called RBT, and you should try this out. So it's a very simple thing that all of you can do today. So do as many squats as you can, okay, until you're tired, and then rest as much as you have to. It could be two minutes, it could be five minutes, and then start doing as many squats as you can again, and then rest as much as you have to. The principle behind this is in that rest, you're allowing your muscles to recover so that you can do more squats. But now if I tell you to do as many squats as you can in 30 seconds and I give you 10 seconds of break and I tell you to do more squats, you won't be able to be as productive because your muscles haven't recovered yet. So that's another system of training called rest-based training, but just to show you how important recovery is. So if you have not slept well at night, there is no point working out the next day or training heavy muscles. At the most, do a little bit of yoga, do a light walk just to stay active. Sleep is the most important ingredient in human health. There is so much that happens while you sleep. You burn fat, you build muscle. All of this stuff happens while you sleep. So there is no point trying to imitate the life of an athlete who does just three things. They eat, they sleep, they train, they eat, they sleep, they train. They don't wake up, they don't have to go to office, they don't have to take the kids to school, they don't have to do any of that. They eat, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train. We can't compare our lives with them unless we're willing to do the same thing. Eat, sleep, and train. So your recovery and your rest is so important. For everyone out there who's hit a plateau with your training, all you need is recovery. Take a week off, take a couple of days off, and then retrain again, and you'll see how your muscles and how your body starts responding to recovery and rest. The second ingredient is the food that you eat to support your training. People out there still train heavy and eat less thinking that they can create a deficit of calories, thinking that I'll train more and I'll eat less and I can, you know, I've saved about 500 to 1,000 calories. You fail. You lose two kilos, three kilos, and that's it. You hit a plateau or you lose two to three kilos of water weight, a little bit of fat, and you're left with all this fat in your midriff area and on your sides, and that never tends to go. Let's understand again, when you are breaking down muscle, your body needs food, energy, protein, carbohydrates, and fat to repair it. If you're not repairing the muscle and you're creating a deficit in your body and your body's not getting energy to recover from your workout, it goes into fight and flight response, also called stress response. 
When you're in stress response, your body does one thing. It stores food as fat, period. I can't understand why people who look to lose weight eat lesser and lesser. They're eating bowls of salad and seeds and chewing on nuts and drinking some green juices and eating fruits all through the day. When you look at athletes and people with great bodies, they eat throughout the day. They have a heavy breakfast, a heavy lunch, a heavy evening snack and a heavy dinner because that's what the body needs to grow muscle and burn fat. Fat is burnt with energy, not by deprivation. Fat requires oxygen. It requires water. It requires carbon to burn. And that energy comes from the food that you eat. So the biggest mistake that men and women do is when they're training hard, they lower their carbohydrate intake. Now, there are good carbs and there are bad carbs. The good carbs, you need it, whether it's your grains, your complex carbs, like your vegetables, your lentils, all of these things. That is what you will give yourselves energy to break down fat in the human body and burn muscle. So let's take, for example, today I do an evening workout at 6 o'clock. It's a heavy workout, and now I have a soup and a salad at night. Okay, while I'm sleeping, while I'm in recovery mode, my muscles and my body's looking for energy to repair my muscle and burn fat. But I've had a soup and salad. Where is the energy going to come from? It doesn't make sense anymore. So people, we got to break away from what the media constantly shows us. Pictures of actresses and models having a bowl of soup or having a salad or a green smoothie as dinner. Your body needs energy if you're training hard. So if you are training hard, you got to eat more of the right foods, including complex carbohydrates. Every athlete, every person with a great body eats carbohydrates called resistant starches, everything that India is scared of. That's your white rice. Those are your potatoes, all your resistant car, uh, carb, starch rich food because that breaks down in the body. It breaks it down into fatty acids that help you break down body fat for your own good. So when you eat the right kind of carbohydrates which are also resistant starch rich like potatoes, that's why athletes have a potato before training, they have a potato after training, they have a potato as a snack, they have a potato right before going to sleep as well. But here we are living with a fear, oh, it's a carb, carbs will make me fat. No, it's your mentality, it's your lifestyle, it's your sedentary lifestyle, and it is your guilt about food that will make you fat and keep you fat. So these are the two ingredients that you have to put into your life if you're looking at changing your body and the way that you lose weight. Recovery and rest. If you feel and your body is telling you the next day that it is not ready to train, okay, listen to your body. Your trainer doesn't know your body. The media doesn't know your body. Google doesn't know your body. Your nutritionist doesn't know your body. Only you know your body. So if you know, I got to take it easy. It's coming from a real space. Do not train. Recover. Flexibility. Training. Light walk. Yoga. And the next day, you're rejuvenated. You're fresh. Hit that workout with everything you have. And that's how you do it. Less is more. That one hour you do a day or 45 minutes, make sure it is so productive and intense that you earn a whole day of rest the next day. And on that day, you feed it the same food. Another mistake people do is on the days they train, they eat high protein. On the days they don't train, they drop their protein. It doesn't make sense. If your muscles are growing during recovery on your rest day, that's the day that your body also needs protein. So you keep your protein uniform throughout the week. On the days that you're working out because you're breaking down muscle and on the days that you're resting because your muscles are recovering, what ingredient does your muscle recover? Does your muscle need when it's recovering? Protein. So if you're going low protein on your recovery day, you're literally wasting the previous day of your workout. So again, rest and recovery is everything. Rest is your best medicine. When you fall sick, why does your body automatically try to slow you down? Because it's using what it knows best as the best medicine with no side effects. Rest. But we're not ready for rest because we've got to keep on socializing, keep on working, keep on living our chaotic life. It's true. All of us do it, including myself. But you have one drug which is inexpensive, free, cannot be patented by the pharmaceuticals. It's literally out there. We all know we have it. It is called rest and it is called recovery for your fat loss, for your muscle growth, for your immunity and for your well-being. And eat right. Don't eat like a sparrow. Don't eat like a bird. You got to eat more calories of the right calories without guilt to supply that, Im that immense intelligent machine called your body to keep doing what it has to do every day. We cut down energy from food thinking that we want to lose weight. You're also depriving 50 trillion cells from energy and you lower your immunity, your hair falls, you look older even though you should look younger because you're working out and eating organic food all the time. 
but it's because you have no energy for your body to do what it needs to do. So it's as simple as that. Recovery and eating the right carbohydrates, the right kind of balanced nutrition to build a great body and a great immunity. Have a good evening, everyone, and have a great weekend. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. All of us have that reset button. We can hit it now. We can hit it tomorrow. We can hit it in the next one hour. We all have it. Decide which part of your life you want to reset and hit that reset button.